Camera wars. Camera wars. Oh my god. Recording now. Camera wars. Oh my god. Your cameras at me. My cameras at you. Camera. Camera. I see a door. Not You brought a shotgun to a no mic fight. Phew, 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 phew. here at the shop uh, putting together a cart for parts for the newest project car and stable uh, it's an s14 I guess I don't know if that's a secret yet we'll find out this is the machine we bought this from some Italian men oh, yeah. I think they were named Mario and Luigi I actually the guy's real name was Mario. Yeah. His brother was there. Probably Luigi. Alright. Galen has equipped me with a jacket so that I don't freeze to death. Yeah. It, it was a very lovely gesture, but it makes me look incredibly fat. <laughs> so what's going on now is the battery has died and it's got two flat tires. And the, the world's most, it's extra open. And the hood won't pop. <laughs> Alright. Good deal, good deal. Oh, uh, mitten game too large. There we go. There it is. Wow, that's bad. We, we, we trailered out to the Mushroom Kingdom in genuinely, it was like an actual blizzard. I think it was like 10 inches of snow and we trailered an S14 back in the snow and we, it was like a state of emergency, I think. Uh, like we passed like four car accidents on the way. It was like poor decision making. So diesels are like real good for towing stuff, but uh, when you turn the heat on, they like never come up to operating temperature. So it's like getting wheezed on by an asthmatic with a fever. Calm down. Let's see. All right, let's let's take two electric boogaloo. Drifting side. <laughs> Hold this. Hold on, making like an inch of progress every time. Oh my god! Oh my god! There's a dream catcher, it's about to catch these hands! That's <laughs> really fucking hard, bro! I really did this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you... <laughs> yeah, look, at the, look at the top of the lid. I'm going to guarantee that this was this car's first burnout. Patrick, what have you found? Battery tie down. It exists. Battery tie down? What was it tying down? The fuse box? The fuse box needed to it was, be appropriately it was held down. It was oh, is there a body in there? Is that a water pump? Wow! There was a brand new KA water pump in there. Something tells me it overheats. Oh, no! Oh, no! What's Chester for... Oh no. Oh no, what's Chester Fertility Reproductive and Go for it. I bet if we put this in the video, we put it fast motion, we'll see it move.
14. Uh, this is a 1995. Uh, it has 105,000 miles on it. It is a factory automatic, four lug. Uh, it's not in perfect shape, but it's in okay shape. Uh, it has a pretty clean body. It has a pretty clean interior. Um, there is uh, not a lot of under chassis rust, but in the engine bay, right on this driver's side strut tower, there's a crazy amount of rust. So uh, I'm gonna have to replace that piece. Uh, like, it's not even fixable rust. It's like fully replaced strut tower rust. Um, that's why it was so cheap. So if you were not maybe a welder, this, would be a, this car would be a no-go. Uh, that, that repair would be pretty impossible if you weren't an experienced uh, welder, but uh, I think we'll be okay with it, and uh, that's pretty much it. And now to christen the new car. Alright, so we are in the shop, it is nighttime, and let's discuss this rust problem that the S14 has. So basically the driver's side front strut tower of the S14 is completely rusted out, no way to fix it, like well, you could fix it with sheet metal and stuff, it would just be very difficult. The passenger side one is good structurally, it's pretty much in good shape, it just has a few little rust patches, so those have to get fixed. and. I have the items here to fix them. I did uh, purchase them with the vehicle. The gentleman had it because he planned on uh, fixing it. So this is the driver's side strut tower. It is not in perfect condition. It is in good enough condition, much better condition than the one in the car. So I will do that. And then this is the passenger side one. Also in pretty decent condition, but nothing to write home about. I mean, remember these cars are from the mid 90s, so they're kind of old now. So yeah, that is what is required for me to fix this stuff. Uh, what I'm basically going to do is cut those items out, you know, drill out the spot welds, cut them, do whatever I need, and then replace the factory ones with it. Now, I'm only gonna do that after I pull the factory motor.
as you can see we got the ka motor out it is uh right here it does run well and everything so i'm going to either sell it or give it to a friend of mine who uses ka's not sure yet now we can begin the progress of uh actually building this car which will start with the strut towers uh that's what i'm gonna do probably later today i'll start working on the strut tower here's a good look at it yep that is rusty and gross and i don't know how easy it's going to be to see this but it's completely separated from the chassis i think the only thing that's holding it in place is actually the brake booster it's in pretty bad shape i'm not that worried about it uh i think that i'll be able to fix it you know in a day solve this problem it will just be a weird one Fine. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so here is our new use strut tower as previously stated this one's not in perfect shape but it's not rusted um, as you can see, this car was in a crash in the front, so this is all bent up. These things are supposed to be flat, and it's all bent up. So it's not like this one is in ideal condition or anything either, but we need something. Um, so uh, we're going to use it. And basically I have to, um, you know, mark it out uh, as best as I can. And if there's, if there's like, you know, a few differences, it's not the end of the world as far as like, you know, if I have to fill something in with a, with a plate or if I have to grind more off or whatever, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, like there's a good chance I'm going to end up having to replace these sections with just sheet metal because this is obviously not straight. Um, but what I'm hoping to get is the wheel well here. I'm pretty sure. That's the appropriate spot. On the edge, it was one and a quarter, so about there. Um, so it was down like that. Like I said, this is probably not even going to transfer to that. Um, this came over here like this. This is what we're basically doing is trying to, you know, roughly repeat the shape from that thing. Um, it seems like what we'll end up being able to use is just this. But, you know, okay. we'll still do our best here. So, a little bit of that. It's basically just following this line down. Um, up here, it was about a half inch from there. 
So what's going to be the actually important part to this is um, when we try to uh, get this thing into the car and I have to measure all this stuff. Uh, basically with the strut tower on the other side and then we determine uh, if it, you, we got to make this one equal to the other side. So that's going to be the uh, more difficult part of this. So yeah. And whatever we have to bend, you know, shape, replace, whatever, just to make this and that equal is what it is. Because that's the only thing that matters for your suspension alignment and stuff like that. That it's equal and it's strong. It's not going to fall out of the car. So, Unlike the U.S. Postal Service, we will bend, fold, spindle, and mutilate. Brand new, 30 seconds ago. I have just finished tacking the strut tower in. Uh, here's a good look at it. Um, I used a level and a tape measure to get the measurements of it equal to that one. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge because this is, was a rusty car and then the replacement strut tower was from a crashed car. So it, it, was, it was tough to get it in there and get everything right. Uh, as you can see, um, there's a few voids here, here, there's one in the back that I have to make, uh, that I have to make sheet metal replacements for. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this car is made of 16 or 18 gauge sheet metal, so making the little pieces won't be a big deal. You know, I'll just like uh, cut, shape, weld, whatever I have to do to uh, fill it in. When it's all said and done and I have it welded and ground down, I'll probably put seam sealer on it. And then I'm also obviously going to undercoat the underside to protect it from rusting again. Um, then uh, you won't even notice it. You know, after it's painted and everything, you won't even notice that it's like uh, a new strut tower. Or the strut tower is not from this car. Uh, I think that I need to power wash this engine bay. Um, after that's strut is in and the thing is a roller again. I think I'm going to roll it outside and power wash this thing because the engine bay is filthy. It's like hard to work and it's so filthy. Uh, I'll give you a glimpse of that. See if you look at that, that's all caked on grime. Uh, I'm guessing that the motor had an oil leak probably from the valve cover that, 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 that leaks on K's a lot. So yeah. She's gross, and I'd like to clean it out. So I have uh, fixed all the rust that I could find in the engine bay. I'll give you a look at that stuff. There's a... Uh, some of it is sheet metal, some of it is a strut tower from another vehicle. There's a bunch of patch pieces. There was much more rust in the engine bay than I had thought. Uh, which also includes the frame rails on the outside. Uh, my next mission now is to clearance the firewall. Well, I'm pretty sure that is the transmission tunnel uh, hammering finished. Uh, if not, I can always hammer it more later. But for right now, I think that's 
a job well done. As you can tell by my horribly ridiculous amount of sweat, it was very difficult. Um, and yeah, let me go over while I'm, while I'm sitting in the engine bay. Let's go over what was replaced rust wise. So here on the passenger side, on the top of the strut tower, you have this little filler plate right here. Uh, there was a small piece of rust there. On the bottom, as it turns out, the uh, strut tower was separating from the frame rail. So I uh, rust proofed it and I gave it this little filler piece here. I don't know how good the lighting is, but we'll see. And uh, turn to the driver's side here, which is the much worse side. Uh, I've made a few filler pieces up there. This entire new, this entire strut tower is new. It has, uh, I don't know, it's from another S14. Uh, it's welded front, back, and then there's a few sheet metal filler pieces here or there. Uh, what you don't see is on the back side where the wheels are, both frame rails were also rotted out, and I had to fix those too. So I'm pretty sure that's the engine bay stuff. Uh, it's ready to be power washed right now, and then I'll you know be ready to prime and paint it after the power washing. All right, now I suspect I'm gonna have to do this power washing probably three or four times. We'll see what happens. Anyway, check it out. Gonna... And now we're getting to soap number two. And rinse number two. And you guessed it, three times the charm. So, what I just finished doing was the uh, long, annoying, and painful process of seam sealing the parts of the engine bay that I welded that, you know, were cut out for rust. So, if you could not, in the last couple shots, see what was welded, this will make it very obvious. Um, so, basically what this is, is on all the seams of everything that I replaced, uh, there's a rubber, you know, sealing liquid to just make sure that it's waterproof stuff like that once primer and paint goes over it it won't be as jarring as it looks now so i'll let this dry overnight and then tomorrow uh i'll prime it and paint it maybe we'll we'll see what happens okay i decided to do one teensy weensy thing uh this evening one one last thing uh i'm going to take this S13 radiator that I have right here and uh, I'm gonna fit it into the car I'm gonna mark it and I will explain all of that stuff uh, as I'm doing so now the main difference so the main difference between an S13 radiator and an S14 radiator are its mounting points you see here on the S13 it mounts here whereas on the S14 it mounts there so one goes to the outside of the radiator one on the inside um, what I want to do is cut one inch, uh, I want to cut one inch out of this front radiator support, uh, so that, so that I can move the radiator forward in the engine bay, if I can get it in there, so I can move it forward in the engine bay to help clear electric fans, accessories, stuff like that. So. That is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mark it out right now, um, but I won't cut it and stuff till tomorrow. But, so, um, so, these little bumps here that you see in the radiator are about 
one inch in. Do you see that? So I'm going to uh, I'm going to use them as my marks and just cut straight across to the width of the radiator on either side. back here and work my way forward. Oh, that's bad. Immediately bad. Well, that was bad. Um, I don't know why, but the primer had an immediate horrible reaction to this entire car. So, um, I'm going to let that dry for like five minutes and then I'm going to put another coat on and then see how that goes. All right. Second coat of primer is on. It's coming out bad, real bad. So, still stuff like that. Firewall looks like garbage. You know, it's it's everywhere. This is uh, the it's it's having a reaction of some kind, and I can't solve it. I'm not a painter. I don't get. It. I'm just gonna keep pushing through. Here's a little bit of an update. Um, I've switched to Rust-Oleum self-etching primer which I've used before, uh, it's a uh, trusted component for me. And uh, yeah, it is priming this thing no problem. So I don't know why the other thing was an issue. And it was at this point that he ran out of the new primer. <laughs> I just finished spraying color on top of the primer. I think it looks pretty good so far, and now, clear coat. Stage one of clear coating is complete. It's uh, everything looks great except for the battery tray, which looks disgusting, because that's how they look. Okay, live with that. All right, so that is five coats of primer, which is ridiculous. Um, zero sanding, and two coats of color, and two coats of clear, and this is what we've ended up with. Now, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's come out um, pretty okay. Nothing, you know, nothing crazy, nothing to write home about, but it's all one color, and it's color matched to the body, so I think it's good. We did have a couple little spots of reaction, uh, one is over here, one's back there, but I mean, pretty, pretty small. I'm not so much worried about those little spots, you know. I can uh, either touch it up later or not care at all, which is the option I'm going to go with. 